Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, first live daily photography show on YouTube. And it is a Monday morning. It is cold outside. We have a fabulous live audience, which is always fantastic. If you're watching this pre-recorded later, do try to tune in live 9.30 a.m. every weekday Pacific time and to participate in the conversation. It's super fun to be able to do that. Hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, one of the comments that came in over the weekend on one of many videos, I don't remember which video it was, doesn't matter, was asking about the focusing system that is used by Panasonic and especially used in the GH5 where it has taken a big upgrade. And it's something called a DFD or depth from defocus. And fortunately, one of our good chaps at Panasonic, Sean, has uh, commented back and given his description. So I'm going to basically take his, add a little bit to that to explain it and try and kind of sum up what DFD is and how this technology works and why it works so well on the GH5. Um, but first I want to read the comment that came in from the person who asked the question because they were basically dealing with, it was kind of nice the way they presented it said, look, since you're dealing with lots of misinformation, this is something I've read. Can you elaborate on this? And so what they had said was, it has been suggested by users of one brand of Micro Four Thirds cameras that DFD or depth from defocus works by utilizing the poor axial chromatic aberration inherent in DFD capable lenses. So basically means, meaning the bad parts of the lens. That's what DFD is using. They said, uh, uh, where's it? Oh, and possibly other defects, which is why DFD does not work with other brand lenses because those other brand lenses are optically so superior to lack the defects that makes DFD possible. So this is apparently a rumor that's out there that says that DFD works because you got crappy lenses and you're, you're capitalizing on the crappiness of the lens to make your focusing work. And that, my friends, ain't true. Fortunately, Sean came in and not only debunked that, but also gave an explanation of what's happening. So I'm just going to read Sean's. We'll put it up on screen over here. We're going to read Sean's and then we're going to kind of uh, break it down or unpack it, as they say in the education world, and uh, and talk about this a little bit. So let's just switch over to this real quick. So, so here is a straightforward explanation as I can give. DFD, or depth from defocus, does not rely on poor optical characteristics. In fact, Lumix and Lumix Leica lenses are designed to some of the highest modern standards for optical design. DFD uses all optical information available from our lenses. Simply put, we use things like out of focus blur at any given focus point, optical sharpness, etc., to determine where the lens is at any given focus point. That information, combined with the new vector tracking in the GH5, produce a focusing and tracking system that rival most PDAF systems. And that's uh, phase detection autofocus, which is uh, probably the most common other autofocus system. In my opinion, this is Sean writing again, in my opinion, after shooting with the camera for a, few, for a few months now, cameras prior to the GH5 don't have the vector tracking system, so tracking will not be as good as it is on the GH5. The reason we state that non-Panasonic or Panasonic Leica lenses may not perform as well as our lenses is because we do not profile the other optics with the DFD system. It's as simple as that. Not because of optical faults, not because X brand makes better lenses or not. Those notions couldn't be further from the truth. I hope this helps clear some things up. So let's go back to this whole, let's go back to the process. So first, let's talk about what DFD is and how it works. The idea behind depth from defocus is that the system analyzes two versions of the scene. And this is happening you know, instantly in real time over and over again. It analyzes two views of the scene, two different amounts of focus. So focus in one position, focus in another. And because it knows everything about the characteristics of the lens, uh, what the, what the blur looks like, what the bokeh looks like, and so on, it is able to analyze the two out-of-focus images from that, calculate the depth, so depth from defocus. So a defocus image, it calculates the depth from A to B, whatever that might be, and then therefore knows where the lens needs to be to make it sharp. It's as simple as that. I mean, simple. It's as simple as that, right? Some genius figured this one out. So you take two out-of-focus images, you know what the profiles, the characteristics of the lens are, so you know that when it looks like it looks like this out of focus, that means it's this far out of focus compared to another one, get the delta, do the math, and off you go. You know exactly where the lens has to be. And it calculates this, in real time, I forget how many times per second, but it's a lot. Um, and so that's essentially what it's doing. So that's how depth from defocus works. It's not looking at the bad parts of the lens, it's looking at the good parts of the lens. They know how sharp that lens is, knows exactly um, uh, exactly where it's in, when it's in and out of focus, and again, does the math from there. And so as Sean said, the reason that the DFD doesn't work as well on non-Panasonic lenses is simply because they haven't profiled them. and 
I don't, he doesn't say in here whether that's something they could do or can't do. I don't know if there's a technical reason not to do it or if it's just a marketing advantage, a market advantage to only do your own lenses. That I don't know and can't comment on. But uh, the reason that it's faster on the Panasonic and Panasonic Leica lenses is as he says here. Now, when you combine this with the vector tracking that is in the GH5, that makes it even faster. What vector tracking is, is essentially predictive uh, motion. It's the, the camera is predicting where the object's going to be. It looks, it sees the object, it sees that it's moving. It calculates the, the direction that it's moving, whether it's forward, back, left, right, or at a diagonal angle, whatever it might be, calculates the direction and the speed at which it's traveling and uses that data to enhance the autofocus speed because it is predicting where it is going to be. So this is why you have all kinds of controls inside of the autofocus system on the GH5, which we explained in another video, which we'll link to right here, that, um, that shows all the different menu options you have in the focus control, so that you, in the autofocus system, so that you can do things like tell the camera if an object moves unexpectedly how, or something unexpectedly comes into the scene, how long does the camera wait before it reacts to that? So if you're shooting the kind of things where you have lots of unexpected movement and you want the camera to grab whatever the most prominent object is, that's one way of looking at it. Whereas another would be you don't want it to, to jump uh, out of focus or try to jump to different focus because something else comes into the scene. One of the easy examples of this, really easy ones to visualize is you're shooting a car or a horse or something going across the scene, you're focus tracking that, and then the camera pans past a light post or the tree trunk or whatever. You don't want the camera to see that and go, oh, focus on the lamppost, oh, focus on the car. You want it to stay focused on the car. So that's part of the control that you have over the system. And that's part of that predictive autofocus. So that's essentially what DFD is and combined with the vector tracking in the GH5, how that all works. So I hope that helps to clarify a few things up. In my sadly limited experience with the GH5, because I had it for a few days and I had to give it back and I don't have it back yet, which is driving me nuts. And I know I'm going to be doing a ton of extra tests. I've got a long laundry list of tests, very specific tests that you guys have been asking for. I will do as many of those as I can as soon as I have a camera again. Unfortunately, it'll be at least beginning of next week before I get one. Um, that's going to be the soonest that I'll have one. So. Unfortunately, very, very limited supply of these cameras in the country, and um, you know I'm not the only one out there who needs it. So uh, yes, yeah, so we'll get them as soon as we can. I know I was initially going to have it last week, didn't happen. So next week I should. So uh, let's just see here. That's that's basically it. that's what I want to see. Let me take a quick look at the comments on here. So there's anything else rolling by? Um, let's see here. I'm scroll back up. Lots of comments flew through. The peanut gallery is awesome. You guys, you guys are no peanut gallery. You're oh, that peanut gallery. Yeah, that's <laughs> definitely awesome. Um, you love the stand for my phone. Thank you. It's, you know, we'll put a link to that. Um, Ryan, let's not forget. We'll put a link to this in the show notes down below. I just bought this. I like it too, because it's very uh, sturdy. It's very stable. This is a good one. Um, let's see here. Trying to decide between the X-T2, that's the Fuji X-T2 or GH5. Both phenomenal cameras. I would absolutely, obviously it depends on what your needs are, but I would say wait until the GH5 is shipping and you get all kinds of independent camera reviews and you can look at the things that matter to you. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to buy a GH5, but then again, hey, I'm sponsored by Panasonic, so I got skin in that game. Um, the X-22 is a fabulous camera. There's no question about it. The GH5 is also a fabulous camera. So advantages, disadvantages to both, I'm sure. I've never shot with the X-T2, but uh, there will be, I'm sure, plenty of reviews comparing the two out there. Hello from Southern Sweden. Freezing cold, but no snow. Well, that's kind of a jip, isn't it? Uh, people really do love to spread bad rumors when they have rival kit brands. This is very true. Very, very true. Uh, let's see here. Hello from Sweden again. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Anything else we got in here? How far are we in? You just received the email, Graham. I'm sorry, Graham Parker, but we are just about done here. 450 times a second. That's the refresh rate. That's what you, you think, Sully. That may sound a little bit high. I'm trying to remember. I wish I had that number in my head. I don't. And if Sean was watching live, he would tell us, but he's not, apparently, or he would have told us by now. So, sorry, I don't know. 450, that number doesn't sound familiar. So, um, I'm not going to say, yeah, I think that's right. You might be right, though. Absolutely. Larks wants more slow motion. Yeah, it's fun stuff. Uh, Silly says, that's okay. This was great. Thanks, Joseph. Really cleared up a lot of confusion as to what exactly DFD is and how it works. Good. I'm glad I could help out with that. Um, looks like focusing is going to be better in the GH5. Oh, gosh, yes, Dimitris. Yeah, you must be new to the GH5 info. Focus on the GH5 is light years ahead. In fact, go here, not now if you're watching live, but if you're watching later, to check the playlist and all the 
um, the sample content that I've produced so far with the GH5, of which I will produ be producing more as soon as I have it. Um, any thoughts on Olympus 60 millimeter macro lens? Can I do headshots with it? I've never shot with it. That'd be 120 millimeter equivalent. That's probably a bit tight for headshots, but it doesn't mean you can't use it. Um, and uh, macro lenses tend to be very, very sharp. So I'm sure it'll be a fabulous lens if that, uh, if it's not too long for you. It might be a little long. 120 mil on a 35 mil equivalent is a little bit long for portraits, but hey, you know, it all depends on what you're doing. Oh, goodness. Um, what is the aperture of the 12 to 60 like at 35? I don't know. Uh, it ramps. I don't know how evenly it ramps. It's not something I looked at when I had it. I don't have it right now, so I can't check. But um, people have asked that. So I think I will, once I have it again, I will probably do that or make a little chart or something for folks. In fact, I'm going to add that to my notes to make sure I don't forget. Um, are you uh, are you going to test the supposed 10-bit noise issue regarding the infamous Cinema 5D article? There's rumors going around Panasonic are issuing a statement in response. So those aren't rumors. They are issuing a statement. Um, at least that's what Cinema 5D said. So we'll assume that's true. And um, uh, I'm not going to test that myself because there are... That level of testing is a scientific rabbit hole, right? And there are people out there on the interwebs who know more about bit depth comparison, have labs to compare them in. I'm going to let them do that. I will, my test, the kind of stuff that I want to do is more real world. This is what the camera looks like shooting in this type of situation than putting it on a bench and trying to calculate the exact loss of whatever. I just, I'm not interested. And no matter what I did, here's one of the reasons I'm not interested in this, um, regardless of the fact that I'm probably not that smart and couldn't figure all that anyway, regardless of what test I did, how scientific, how accurate it is, somebody out there would call me an idiot and tell me I did it all wrong. And frankly, I don't need that kind of grief. So there you go. Um, and all right, we're going to, we're going to knock this off here. What lens are we using for your show at the moment? That is the 20 to 12 to 35. Sorry. That is the Panasonic Leica 12, not the Leica. Let me just start that whole thing over again. The question is, what lens am I using on this show at the moment? It is the Panasonic Lumix 12 to 35 f2.8 lens, and it is attached to a, a Blackmagic Design Micro Studio camera, Micro Cinema, Micro Studio Camera 4K. I'm going to get into this thing a little bit more later. I bought the camera. It's great for what I'm doing. Um, we'll talk about that more in another show. Okay. My goodness, so many questions flying by. I heard the ETC, ETC? I don't know what that is. Uh, cropping for, for, uh, worked less desirable than GH5. I don't know what that question means, Labroxas, so I'm going to skip that, sorry. Um, Trevor saying, I keep seeing questions of Metabones adapters, compatibility in all the forums. Have I tested or planned to test it? So I reached out to Metabones. Uh, they have not responded. I will go through my contacts at Panasonic to get in touch with them because they're probably ignoring me because they're probably getting a lot of questions about it. Um, but I have not used it. I've never used a speed booster before. So the whole thing is totally new to me, but I know a lot of people are asking about it. So if I can get one from them, uh, I will absolutely run some tests, play with it a little bit, see what it looks like. Okay. Um, my goodness. All these questions. How editable are 6K photos? The 6K photo mode is a JPEG, so it's as, as editable as a JPEG is, as an 18 megapixel JPEG. What version of the GH5 will I be getting? Still pre-production? Uh, yeah, until they're actually shipping, it's not production. So yes, uh, whatever I get will be a pre-production, but I do know that I will get a production model absolutely as soon as possible once they start shipping. I'm sure there are people higher on the priority list than me, but I will be getting a production model as well. Okay. Uh, Sully loves the speed boosters. You have three. That's awesome. Sully, I'm going to contact you when I get these things to make sure I'm using it right. And, um, oh, okay. So Lab uh, Labroxas is clarifying. ETC, the extended electronic teleconverter. Ah, that's what you're asking about. We're great with the GH2. Okay. So let me see what the question was. I've heard that the ETC, the electro extended or electronic teleconverter, um, cropping in for 4K or full HD pixel for pixel mapping, right? Works less than desirable on the GH5. So I'm trying to remember. I don't think I played with it. On the GH4, what it would do is if you're shooting in HD, it would punch into the frame, into the sensor to use just the native 1920 by 1080 pixels so that you are effectively zooming into the screen, but you're cropping into the sensor. And it'll work quite well. Um, on... On the GH5, you're using the whole sensor for both HD and 4K. So punching into native 4K wouldn't be much of a punch. It's, it'd be like a 5.1K down to 4K. So it's not a huge punch. Um, but that's in 4K mode. In HD mode, it should still punch all the way into the middle of the sensor. But I did not play with it. And again, I don't have a camera now, so I can't verify it. But um, that would be the difference in 4K, although you didn't have the, the punching in 4K before at all. So I'm not really sure. 
Not really sure how to answer the question, sorry. Um, your old photo, you missed the first 10 minutes, you're gonna have to go back to the beginning and watch the show because I'm not gonna start it over. Um, okay, that's it. I am I am out of here. Oh, news, uh, Sully saying, news shooter said there's no incompatibility with the Speed Booster XL and the GH5. That would be fantastic. Um, all right, all right, last question here. Geo Kid says, hey, Joseph, I've asked you before in the comments about the ability to set an FN button for fast switching to 1080p, 180 FPS. Did I manage to check that? I have not had the camera back, so I cannot check that. Okay. Um, all right, uh, there's too many questions coming through. <laughs> wow, lots of people watching live. You guys are awesome. This is great. Uh, keep on throwing your questions into the comments if I didn't get to them here. And uh, and as always, we'll try to answer them there as well. All right, guys, tomorrow, I think, I think I'm going to do a live. I talked about it last week. I was thinking about doing it today, but Mondays are a bad time to do anything that requires setup. Um, a live shoot, a mimicking a portrait session that I did last week that just came out really nice. And we'll do a live shoot in the studio, one light shoot, and then bring it into Lightroom and do a little adjustment because that's that kind of thing's kind of fun to see. Okay. All right. I'm out of here, guys. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. Have a great week. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, like the video or you can do that too. But if you do that, tell me why and be nice about it because if you're a jerk, I'm just going to delete your comment anyway. Um, but I'm, I'm open to constructive criticism. And don't tell me I talk too fast. I know I talk fast. It's not the coffee. It's just me. See you guys later. Have a great week. Bye-bye.